Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I hope everybody's having a great day. It is a very pretty day today. It's very, very pretty, and it's still summer, basically, here. I think so. I like it. It is. Well, what's nice is the nights get cooler, so the nights are wonderful for sleeping and stargazing, but during the day, hey, it's still summer. Uh huh. <laughs> it's a good thing. We want to thank all of our patrons. Talking about a good thing, we couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you very, very much, patrons. Exclusive videos going up there every week, usually about every three or four days, and we have a ballot drop lit on fire with hundreds of ballots inside. This is Clark County, Washington. Oh, you know, we, we all know what's coming to a degree. Um, please do share what you think exactly is coming. Here it is, 10-28 and 11-5. 11-5 is the day, uh, yeah, it's a big day, but it may not settle anything in reality. No, it, it may not. We might have more of this. And actually, fire is kind of a clean way. It, at least it wasn't something really gross. Yeah, well, I don't know. Are they going to try to do some counting there? You yeah, know, uh, know, yeah, well, here you go. This is Nevada. Nevada Supreme Court rules that ballots without postmark arriving three days after the election must be counted. Wait a minute, three days after? So, in other words, y there's no way you're knowing anything uh, come when you go to sleep on the 5th. There's no way. I mean, you, you might know a trend, unless it's a complete landslide, just a out-and-out out complete landslide, like, you know, something we haven't seen in a long time. Like ever. Like ever. And even with that, um, I mean, well, if you think about it, what would get people the most riled up? A complete landslide that gets overturned or ignored. Yeah. It, you know, this is the sign of the times, right? Here. How concerned are you about the long-term status of the dollar? This is Janet Yellen, in case you don't recognize her, by the way. This is the Department of the Treasury. I take this as a sign. Oh, boy. Over a longer time horizon, how concerned are you about the potential impact of the dollar's status as the world's reserve currency? <laughs> <laughs> over a longer time horizon, how concerned are you about the potential impact of the dollar's status as the world's reserve currency? <laughs> Who did that? Oopsie. Uh, does that mean the dollar is going to fall? I mean, yeah, it's going to fall. I mean, this is obviously part of the plan. Um, the it, reserve currency is based upon, again, the petrodollar. Uh, we understand we were on the gold reserve. We were taken off of the gold reserve in the 70s. I remember the 70s with the long lines of gas and rampant inflation. Oh, it's just a lot of jokes were born in the 70s. Lots of bad hair. Uh, but yet a lot of good times too. I agree. I agree. And some of the best songs ever. I think so too. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, what do you make of this? I mean, who did this was this a setup the the department of the treasury's logo comes down was this an angel was this a little devil was this something that was planned or is this just truly a coincidence i i would go along m more the lines of a little elemental having a lot of fun yeah maybe sharing you know what what is to come more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Just a reminder, you know, this is a, isn't the first time they said something was fine. And it wasn't fine. You know, frontal lobotomies. I, I've showed you guys signs for go ahead and check out a full frontal lobotomy. Seriously, they sold it. You stress too much. This, this will solve that. You won't be stressing anymore. We kid you not. This is what they told us. And how many times have they told us this? And they continue on and on, and they just kind of repackage and resell things. So, yeah. Yeah, you're suffering from toxic overload. Have some more toxins. It just doesn't seem to make sense. I don't think so. 
Meanwhile, this is Charlie Kirk flying back from Wisconsin on a friend's plane. Got called up to the cockpit. Pilots were very confused at what they were seeing. Something was ab above them and not showing on radar. Um, and they point out the fact that they've seen this numerous times. Um, I don't know if this is real or if this is part of a disclosure that's ongoing. You know, again, you have to look at, at the people. He has 3.6 million followers. He is part of the system. You know, it's one way, shape, or form. Uh, so my guess would be this is kind of part of disclosure. I'll give you a little bit. Now I'm seeing up my but Look, your radar would pick it up if it was an aircraft, right? Yes. There's one below us at 8,000 feet. There's another one below us at 6,000 feet. There's nobody out there. 200 miles. There's nobody. But what kind of a thing would not be picked up on radar? Yeah, exactly. Could it be military? I don't think so. So he talks about like 80,000 feet and, um, you know, things way up there. Not showing on radar. You know, obviously, as he says, could be stealth. Uh, it, it could be beings with a Merkaba. It could be plasma, perhaps. It could be a lot of things or there could really be nothing, too. You know, I, I don't think it's ever really nothing, but this is definitely something to pay attention to. Always look at the look at the followers. That says a lot about what's really going on. Yeah, well, you know, 3.6 million followers means this is something that has the stamp of approval by at least one facet of the bigger control uh, organization. Here you go. Elon is really sharing a little bit with those in the know. <clears throat> the Sumerians crushed it on firsts. You know, Sumerians, really interesting, because when you talk about Sumeria, you got to talk about the Anunnaki and the Ijiji, <clears throat> the gods and the lesser gods. <clears throat> and really, we, we are still using so much of their system. We, we might think of ourselves as uh, Western society being under the Greco-Roman system, but in reality, it's really under the Anunnakian uh, system, the Draconian Anunnakian. So, you know, here you go, Autism Capital saying, quoting Elon, we can build a permanently occupied science base on the moon, we could build a city on Mars, we can build a multi-planetary species, very exciting. We want to make Starfleet Academy real and go out there and visit other star systems eventually. Maybe there are alien civilizations to discover. So, and a shout out to the ancient Sumerians. He's talking again about not just the Sumerians, the ones that they worshipped, the ones that, that you know, gave us our present system, because this is really where uh, ground zero kind of is. And so he's really talking about the control system is, is what he's talking about. Here he is saying the sun is 99.8% of the entire mass of the solar system. Jupiter and Saturn are about two-tenths of a percent. Everything else is a rounding error. So, you know, the sun is 99.99% of energy output. Everything else is inaudible background noise. And then he goes into talking about the Kardashev scale, which we've talked about so many times, done whole videos on. It is, you know, named after a Russian professor that's just basically, you know, making educated guesses at the level of technology that different beings would have as they progress on up in the realization of how to harness the power of the energy, the power of the energy of the planet that you're on first, and that gets a level one. We're said to be 0.7, maybe we're pushing 0.8 now. If you harness the power of a solar system, it's level two, or, you know, a Kardashev scale level two, or three, if you can harness the power of a galaxy. And then it's even gone beyond that, too. Uh, people have branched it way out now at that that whole concept has has you know, made its way into the minds of people for, for a period of time now. And so he's, he's telling you again about the fact he's getting you ready for when he introduces some of his buddies. And that's really the bottom line. You know, they really want to harness our energy. Our energy is the thing that's the most important to them because to harness our energy completely, fully, 100%, 
is to harness the sun's energy. So if they have every bit of us under their control uh, via nanotech, um, via uh, AI, whatever, uh, this to them is, is what they truly want. It's just uh, Elon, Elon says it a little nicer. Oh, he, he, he really, he has the best job. He's playing the good cop. He really does. But he's still trying to sell you on an integration with AI that will trap your human soul. Well, again, we are having a temporary experience as a human. The, the soul is not necessarily human. The soul is of source, where fractals of source. So what he wants to do is, is suspend you in this human state and just basically leech off of you as a, a power source. That's really what they're trying to sell. Exactly. I think I got that right. Yes, you, you did. You did great. Why, why thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Elon's name, when you look at Elon Reeves Musk, it really is from El Elyon, is the, which is God Most High. El Elyon. And Reeves is another way another word basically saying the same thing so you know they they have made him out to be the representative of the egg here on earth the lesser gods uh and again these godlike beings they're just beings that don't come uh from earth they don't originate on earth and yet we're ultimately star seeds as well so you know it, it's it's again not a biggie once you understand that there's life out there everywhere everywhere even under your fingernails yeah one million old <laughs> one million year old drill bit discovered this from billy uh carson by the way uh this was this was a, a find that was reported back in 1852 1852 and a strata of rock thought to be a million years old a drill bit yeah, uh, there's a lot of these things, though. This is the thing. It's not just one item. And, and I remember doing videos like five years ago uh, covering many different unique items found similarly like to this. We are not the pinnacle of modern anything. And there is absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing new under the sun. Absolutely. It's just realizing that. And here you go, 190 miles east of Catalina Island on the ocean floor, 32 degrees uh, north. You can see very, very straight lines organized. They're all over, you know, Google Earth, and we've covered many different ones. It's it's almost hard to not find something new when you just spend 15 minutes searching Google Earth, looking at the ocean bed. Oh yeah, you know, so much lies right under our feet. This is what we were talking about in uh, the earlier video on EER. It's ancient roads found in the Amazon rainforest using LIDAR and, and geoglyphs. Again, These there's tons of geoglyphs over in Peru and Nazca, but then they keep finding more and more. They just discovered like another two to three hundred more uh, geoglyphs over in the Nazca area. But the thing is, they're all over the place. Now, we're told that the Amazon rainforest has always been the way it is. No, no. There were vast amounts of people. There were towns. There were basically cities. Uh, there, there were hundreds of thousands of people, according to uh, some basically that have been looking at these formations. Hundreds of thousands of people needed to make this happen, to make it really, really happen on the scope that... Uh, it has happened. So they found thousands of these because people are now cutting down the rainforests in order to, uh, you know, use it for agriculture. And now we could take LIDAR and go where the rainforest is still intact and see that these geoglyphs and these streets and these roads and what looks to be cities, they're just everywhere under the ground there. Everywhere, and you know, it's it's not like that they could have like a little uh, camp or anything. This is more than just putting up some uh, teepees and some tents. This is like huge scale making of a, a, a city. It's it's pretty amazing. We've shared that the Mahabharata, which is thought by most, not all, uh, to be telling us the story of perhaps the, one of the greatest battles the Earth has ever seen. 
that it was dated about 5,100 years ago. And in that battle, 1.3 or 1.4 billion people perished in one single battle. This was huge. And this was a global civilization. This wasn't uh, just something that happened in today's um, area that we know of as India and Pakistan, perhaps Afghanistan, and, and going up higher uh, into uh, the other countries like Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan. Th this is really, we're talking about battles that basically left the world enslaved in the dark matrix. And the people that were living peacefully, they were living very, very different. When you look to the Indus Valley area, uh, Mohenjo-Daro comes to mind. These people were living in ways that we don't live. In other words, there was no government. There was no uh, king. There was no queen. These, this was a time before kings and queens. The whole concept of kingship, which is so ingrained in the minds of, of most of the world, uh, was foreign to the people here on Earth before the dark matrix, the dark controllers came here. There was a mysterious wall found in Michigan, Georgia, 1895. And it looked like basically it was <laughs> filled in and fixed with cement. Uh, yet this really hits me because we found so much stuff out in the desert that really looked very similar to cement too. And we found indentations, circular indentations in rock that you would swear there was something metallic and wearing... Uh, making up being made up of, of many many tons um, sitting down on this this area and wearing into it uh, that's the only thing I could think of or maybe a ship coming and landing uh, in ancient times there's a lot of curiosities there again so many civilizations have come and gone how could this happen well when you look at what's in the food they are adding ingredients to the food supply that's been shown to cause a lot of the big C. And we understand that, that the food industry is tied in with the FARMA industry. And when you look at shareholders who owns, you know, one is, is generally uh, going to be tied into other and profits are being made off of both. Yes, healthy people don't bring in a lot of revenue. No, healthy people kind of ruin everything for, for so many that are just, you know, trying to pay for their mansions and their nice cars and get all the things. Uh, healthy people, yeah, no, especially healthy people that tell other people how to get healthy. Those are the big problems. And we understand that it starts when you're young and you think that you're uh, doing the right thing when, you know, you're, you're running your infants off uh, to go and get their checkups and then you know any little thing happens and you know hey just take this and again antibiotics they destroy the microbiome uh, they're going to give you all sorts of inflammatory problems later on in life allergies they are also uh, going to disturb the way you think literally it, it really does. I mean, it has such a huge effect on the way you think when you take antibiotics and people simply do not know. And if you're someone who is a sensitive, uh, those antibiotics are really going to wreak havoc because if your cells are dying, guess what? What's going to go through your head is that you are dying and there's probably no rhyme or reason for it. You know, myself and I know other people that have um, become like suicidal and not understand what is going on. It's those stinking antibiotics that are killing all the cells. They are killing all the life. Now, if you are determined enough, there are ways around antibiotics. But unfortunately, I haven't seen too many people that are determined enough. So they tend to give to the antibiotics. Um, but once you experience that thing, uh, where they really wreak havoc on your mind and your soul, boy, you become really quick to figure it out. And there's a lot of things that can be done. They're just, they're not easy things. And that's why people just keep, you know, they, they take what's in the bottle because it's easier. The way that we farm too, the way that we grow things, uh, it not only affects us, it affects the plants, which then do affect us. So, the mineral content 
of like calcium, magnesium, iron in plants and veggies has fallen almost 90% over the last 100 years. Uh, is this possibly intentional? Well, I think so. It just obviously is because, again, they, they obviously don't want us sharp and healthy. They don't want us focused and clear thinking. And this, you know, again, is modern day farming methods. Here again, this is why you can't afford to not eat as organic as possible and to try to find sources that are doing things the right way because you'll never be healthy if you don't. And and again, your health, if you don't have your health, what do you have? You, you, you have to value your health um, first and foremost and, and put that at a premium. You absolutely do. That has to be uh, uno number one, because if you do not make time for your wellness, you're going to be forced to make time for your illness. Do not forget that. Write it down. Yeah, it's that old pay me now, pay me later right. thing, going to the doctor or you pay more for the food. Mm -hmm. um, key ingredients of detox baths for kids. Baking soda neutralizes chlorine in the water. Um, diatomaceous earth aids in removing heavy metals from the body. Incredible water purifier. Bentonite clay attracts and traps viruses and bacteria. Apple cider vinegar balances body pH, beneficial for kids with eczema. Epsom salts boosts levels of magnesium, reduces inflammation. So, you know, again, some quick things to look into and to utilize. Now, this right here is, is talking about David Grush and mentioning at hearing that the first recovery that he can talk about happened in 1933 in Italy, talking about UFO, UAP, where a craft was retrieved during Mussolini's regime. The craft was reportedly held in an Italian air base until it was later transferred to the U.S. after World War II. He hints at even earlier recoveries, but he's kept the details classified. This is Phil Schneider, um, a geologist whistleblower who worked on government projects, spoke about secret underground bases, advanced technology that he claimed was retrieved from extraterrestrial sources. And, you know, he did um, also leave us under very suspicious terms. Oh, yeah, a, a suicide note. Yeah, I don't know. Strangling yourself with a rubber hose. I, that doesn't seem to be logical. But there's a lot that's not logical, but did happen. Indeed. This is just horrible. And, you know, again, the Australian aboriginals, the way that the indigenous people of the world have been treated, again, by colonialist, colonialist powers, just inexcusable. And we can't ever have that type of thing going on again. And yet again, they always teach us in a dogmatic way. They use dogma to pit us against each other. And yes, it is Halloween, it is scary times, and e even the critters want to get in on the fun. Leave leave them a little cookie or something. Yeah, he's, he's trying to do his trick-or-treat. Oh, yeah. How about this guy? This guy is, is the uh, attention hog here. Hey, he's doing a little photobomb. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cute. Oh, somebody's a ham. Talk about a ham. Now, this little guy found paradise. He hit the jackpot. All he knows is that he made his way to the promised land. He is in heaven. He is eating manna given from God. Or at least that's what he might think he's doing. But we know better. And meanwhile, make a friend. You know, it doesn't have to be the same same type of being it doesn't even have to be the same classification of species we can make friends with anybody love is love absolutely thank you for your support source bless and namaste namaste